Hey everybody, Brandon Jones here, host of GT Live. Welcome to the show. Today's game is Heroes of the Storm, being played by Mr. Ben Moore. And we are giving away codes today for Heroes of the Storm. You're giving away three codes to the three best questions. Mr. Kyle Bossman is going to be in the chat, so please direct your questions at him. And you can direct your questions also towards our fabulous voiceover guests today, Mr. Dave Finoy and Mr. Kiff Vandenhuvel. And me on my iPad make a noise. <laughs> is that feedback? Is that the live? Speaking of voices. <laughs> so, so you guys have been in a ton of games. You've also been in TV shows. If you've been in film, mm -hmm. um, uh, just just for people at home that are familiar with your voices but not familiar with the games that you've been in. Uh, the Evil Within was was a fun one that I noticed, Kiff, that you'd been in. Yes. Uh, you are the man who does not make it out of that game. I don't know. Uh, if, I don't know if you've played The Evil Within, but things do not work out well for things, your character. Things don't work out for anybody in that game. <laughs> it's it's just terrifying, especially. Uh, yeah, <laughs> things don't work well for that character, but it was a great it was a great time. Um, another character that you would argue uh, does not work out well for Mr. Comstock from Bioshock yes. Infinite. Uh, right. Other games you have touched: uh, Infamous First Light, Disney Infinity, Aliens, Colonial Marines, Star Wars: The Old Republic. Yep. Uh, and Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition was, was a deep my, cut from way back first in the day. One, man. Yeah, yeah mocap and everything. Wow. Yeah, um, yeah. Dave, I don't. I I tried to find something that you're not in, uh, and I couldn't <laughs> find them. So unfortunately, there's a quick list. Uh, Evolve, you did some additional voices for. I actually have mm. some questions about additional voices and what that means. Uh, and you are quite prolific with uh, the Telltale games. Yeah. You've done uh, Tales from the Borderlands and The Wolf Among Us, but people probably know you best from The, the Walking, Walking Dead, Dead game, yeah. portraying Mr. Lee Everett. Uh, so thank you guys so much for being on. So maybe we can start, yeah, with additional voices. How, do, how does that happen? It, it, or do you audition for a role and they like you but they don't want to cast you as something and so then they have you in? Well, you know, most things uh, happen because of an audition. Uh, I don't remember if I auditioned for that or if somebody just booked me. Yeah. Chances are I auditioned uh, for a role and I might have had one role that wasn't that big and they decided, well, <laughs> just put it in with the additional voices. Mm -hmm. And you might play several characters. Even if you play the main character in a game or a main character, usually not the main character, but if you play a main character in a game, you might have some additional voices uh, to go along with it. Uh, and several games I have a big part and then several little parts, uh, you know. Yeah, can you give me a voice uh, a little different right. this time? Yeah. Yeah, that, that happens frequently. I think in our contract that allows for that too, that they have you for a certain amount of time. So you might focus on doing a tremendous amount for one like lead character. Like in The Evil Within, for example, I played uh, the cop and then mm -hmm. and then there was like, listen, we got we got two lines for this crazy villager. Do you mind just throwing that down? You know, he's an he's a heretic. Kill him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we oh, got you've, been, you've been villagers too. Oh sure, yeah, villagers, yeah, yeah. villagers, tribesmen, cops, villagers. Tribesmen. Yeah. Uh, guys getting blown up. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Can you do that in German? Sure. Uh, and exertions too. That's that's another. That's another. <laughs> we were talking about that. The, uh, that's the tough part of this business is the exertions because you got to hit, be hit, kick, be kicked. Uh, yeah. Sometimes you burn to death. Yeah, I was, was going to say lit on fire. You got to yeah. end on that. In Aliens, I had one, one, of, the, one of them was uh, acid burn death. So, <laughs> so alien, alien blood splashes on my character and three different intensities. So initial, but I don't know what different intensities when, when alien blood burns through your skin from my experience, there's one intensity. Right. Well, as a director would say, well, no, you, it hits you, it hurts, it happens fast. That's it. It hits you, it hurts more, but it takes longer. <laughs> it hits you, it burns for a long time. You are in much pain for <laughs> for half an hour. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, How that's much what longer do I have to scream? It's all about timing. You really, you know, it's like yeah. don't don't give me emotion. Just literally ten seconds. Just just give yeah. me like yeah. an give me ten. Run the clock, and then I'll start fading out at nine, like I fell off the cliff. So you mentioned you know, you go in and then they try to get the most out of you that they can for the time that you go in. So I imagine uh, you know we, we were talking earlier about some of the games you had been in. And you're like, oh yeah, I was in that game. Does that happen a lot? Where like something comes out and you're like, oh yeah, yeah I am a Skylander. That's right, I forgot. Oh, I am a Skylander. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> It uh, does, you know. I, I certainly for me, like some some of the stuff where it's not like a real like heavy character or it's a small role. I mean, like like on Star Wars: The Old Republic, for example. I, I did my first session in two thousand eight in Chicago for Skavik. My second session in two thousand nine, like a full year, and then the game came out in two thousand eleven. And there are other characters that I did in the game that I have no memory of doing because it was like that additional thing where it's like you get a script of Excel spreadsheets. And it's like, well, this character has like four lines, and you're like, get out of here, Wookie, uh, and and then you just kind of it just kind of passes, 
Um, but other titles, like something like, I'm sure for Dave, like The Walking Dead, when you have that, the volume of time that you spend with that character and that production company and those producers, you know, it, it carries a special place. Never forget. You'll never, never forget. You'll never forget that. Uh, the things I'm doing with Borderlands right now, it's uh, kind of a minor character uh, that I'm playing, but he's memorable and he comes back over and over and over again. Um, but a lot of times, it's just a matter of time. I've been voicing uh, games since the mid-90s. Yep. And when I started, games were kind of new, and I just thought of it as, you know, animation, another animation job, and, you know, go home and wait for the check in the mail. And I wasn't playing those games, so, you know, years later, I've forgotten, and now some fan, oh, man, I loved you in King's Quest, or, the, you know, whatever. <laughs> was I in that? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess I was. Well, let me check my IMDb page. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 What's yeah. what that was? <laughs> so we, we talked a little bit about gaming beforehand. So, Kif, you, you have mentioned that uh, you are somewhat of a gamer. Do you have a preferred yeah. genre, or do you... Do you uh, um, I, I, Do you get excited when you get cast in something that you're exci all so oh, excited yes. about the game? Without a doubt. I, I mean, I remember reading about Bioshock Infinite on Game Informer magazine when they first launched it, or when they first announced the game. I was like, oh man, that's awesome. And then the idea of being able to work on that game, even the, take it back a step, just the opportunity to audition for something that you're excited about and to be considered for it, let alone booking it, is, is an honor. And, and the Infinite auditions had come through, I want to say, six months before they did another audition where I got Comstock. Because the Infinite stuff came through and was like, ah, all right, well, I didn't get anything from that. And then Comstock came around and auditioned and booked it. So it was kind of like, oh, wow. Well, I auditioned. Um, I didn't get anything. I know. I'm sorry. Oh, I know. Yeah, you're, I know. You're, you're, you're you were really, you, you know what it was? Was conflicts. You were too busy. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. That's the thing. So, so that's, <laughs> that's where I put stuff. Good, good one. Good right? one. It's a good justification <laughs> for not letting. Well, you know what? I'm just too busy. Uh, it makes sense that they wouldn't cast me. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, to be, to be a part of that and to be part of that world um, is, is really thrilling. And it's fun to be a gamer. It's like being a, a fan of movies and then working with someone that you love. Yeah, you know, I, I get to I get to work with Al Pacino in this film, Danny Collins, and like to be able to play with the guy, you know, for seven eighths of a page and you know, hoo -ah! and then uh, and, and you know, <laughs> and so it's yeah exactly. I yelled at one point and we were improvising and I said something like uh, "Good night, sleep tight," and he yelled "Down at the bed bugs, Bob." <laughs> so yeah, fun. So wait, it was wait. great. <laughs> It's so stupid and fun, but like, um, you know, like when you, when you admire something, whether it's games or film or sports or heroes or whatever, to be able to participate, you're, I feel like I'm paying back the 12 year old kid who just wanted to be a Ghostbuster. Right. You know what I mean? Well, you also do a lot of impersonations. I've seen you do lots of uh, skits and fun ADR games and stuff like oh, that yeah. at conventions and stuff. Were you, were you like, Watching Pacino the whole time and just like, oh, okay, yeah, like, <laughs> just like to yourself, like I gotta remember that. that was cool. uh, it, it, it was. It, it's funny because the I want to say yeah, it was awesome because he was so big, but it but it was so quiet and focused, right? And um, <laughs> everything was subtle, you know. But then when the moment came to like when we started to play a little bit and he popped up a little bit more, right. it was fun. I never, but it's one of those things I never want to do an impression of someone for them it feels like the oh, of ultimate, course. like just kind of <laughs> awkward embarrassing moment chris cox has a great story about doing sam shepherd for or i'm sorry sam uh, sam elliott for sam elliott and oh. sam elliott was like okay goodbye <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was like because oh, no. uh, you don't know how people are going to take it exactly. so, sometimes they'll be like oh hey that was great wow thank you and actually if somebody were doing impressions of me i i think i would uh i'd love it because uh, imitation is a sincere form of flattery, and if you think enough of me that you're doing my, you're trying to do me, right. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> go yeah. ahead. Or, that really sucked. Right. <laughs> you can do better. That's <laughs> right. Try harder, kid. Honesty is the toughest part of the whole equation. So if you guys, yeah. if you guys are curious where all the incessant clicking is coming from, uh, <laughs> that's coming from over on this side of the stage, where Mr. Ben Moore is tapping away yeah. incessantly Hi, at Heroes of the Storm. And uh, we are giving away three codes for Heroes of the Storm. If you ask a really good question that Kyle Bossman digs, at the end of the show, you will get a code for the closed beta of Heroes of the Storm that you've been spending a lot of time with, Ben. Uh, yeah. Have you been getting more and more excited as you played this game? Yeah, um, at first I wasn't really that into it because I had come from a pretty heavy MOBA background. I've played a lot of League of Legends and Dota 2. And so I think I was constantly comparing it to those games and coming up disappointed. But once I sort of 
saw what it was trying to do and how it was trying to be different, and it kind of clicked with me, uh, I've been playing it every night ever since. Uh, it is extremely stressful, though. I think Huber can attest to how much insanity is happening on screen yeah, at any insane. moment. Like, I, I'm clicking so much because I have to. Like, there's the, <laughs> otherwise I die, you know? <laughs> so that's... Uh, the fact yeah, that I'm able to form sentences and play this game right now, uh, I'm proud of myself. Compared to Dota and stuff, this is constant mayhem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you raining glass on bad guys? What's he's ice. trying to? Ice. She's all about ice. Oh, ice. Okay. Uh, so mm. you so kind yeah, of slow you, them down. Who are you down. playing as at right now? I'm playing as Jaina Proudmore. Nice. Uh, from the Warcraft universe. Is that a preferred character? Uh, yeah, she's really, really good in this game. I think she's one of the best heroes in the game. Uh, she can just do so much and create so much space. And just do a ton of damage if you combo her abilities right. Uh, Huber was very disappointed with yeah. my pick, though. Uh, Wizard he... really likes mages, and uh, they're traditionally overpowered, in my <laughs> opinion. So matches in this game, guys, can get up between like 15 and 20 minutes. So he's only going to do about three matches <laughs> through the entirety of the show. Are you going to yeah. be changing characters, Ben, throughout the show? Yeah, I probably will. It depends. If we win, I might, I might feel like a hot streak coming on and just stick as that character. If we lose, I might try to switch it up. But uh, most Dota and League matches last anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. So that's actually one of the things I like about Heroes of the Storm is how quick it is. Of course, you, you could have been playing Dota in which I'm six characters. But no. <laughs> well, no, I'm on the show, on, and you're playing a different game. <laughs> Hold on. Well, Dave, we, we are going to talk about you because if you, I don't know if you know, you're familiar with Heroes of the Storm. So this is Blizzard. So this is the same oh, yeah. guys that oh, are yeah. doing Hearthstone and yeah. uh, Warcraft and Starcraft and all that stuff. And it is a collection of the greatest heroes of oh. the Blizzard universes. Oh. So you, you, so you got lots of horses in this race. I don't know if they actually have taken the dialogue you have previously done or if they're bringing in other actors, which actually brings up an interesting point that I want to talk to you guys about. But uh, if you're unfamiliar of your history with Blizzard, uh, uh, you are uh, uh, Vol Jin, who is Vol'jin, the current yeah. uh, leader of the Horde. Leader of the Horde. Yes. Nice. You are uh, Gara Jal, the spirit binder, who is in the uh, Mogushan vaults from uh, oh, Mists of Pandaria. I forgot about that. You are a that. boss. People toiled over you, trying to take you down in World of Warcraft. Uh, you were also in Cataclysm, which was the last expansion I played in Warcraft before I ran away screaming from that game. Uh, you, played, you played the Prophet Zul. And another game that you were in that I played a ton of, StarCraft II, Wings of Liberty, oh, yeah. Yeah. you were Gabriel Tosh. Gabriel Tosh. So has, has Tosh been in Heroes of the Storm yet? Tosh has not been in Heroes of the Storm. Let's I see, actually think... They could use. They, they have too many Warcraft characters. I think they could use a few more Starcraft characters. So, uh, so yeah, they, um, well, I'm trying to remember the main ghost. What is her name? Nova. Nova. Well, the, no, so well, Nova's in there, right? I mean, unless you're thinking of like pre Queen of Blades, Sarah Kerrigan. I'm getting too nerdy. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> but too nerdy like, yeah, for this show. I don't think too so. Nerdy. I... <laughs> uh, so, so yeah. So I wonder. Um, it. I, I find it interesting that uh, characters will show up in various games and yet are voiced by different people. Do you ever feel burnt in that way? Have you ever like seen a game that comes out and you're like, hey, wait, I originated that character. And well, then you know, there's, there's a little bit of that, but when you look at the big picture, uh, it, it's kind of like looking in the movies and, and saying this actor has played Superman and, and I never want to play Superman because they all die. But uh, uh, you know, different, different actors play uh, the, the, the same character and and then, of course, you can have the, the, uh, the nerdy war. Well, Hoop was better, man. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I mean, I think that it's the character doesn't belong to the voice actor. Yeah, right. The character belongs to the storytellers and to the fans. And if, listen, if, if in episode one and episode two and episode three, they want to mix it up different voices because they're doing different time jumps and different alternate realities. I mean, it happened with, uh, well, I keep coming back to it, but it happened with Bioshock Infinite when the first uh, DLC, I think it was um, when they go down to Rapture, mm -hmm. and you play as Comstock, and it was already been established that it was Comstock at that point, but I understand, it was like, it's going to be Troy. Troy is going to voice right, that because right. he was DeWitt. So right. it totally makes sense, and you go, well, that's part of it. I'm lucky to have been a part of what I was, and, you know, here we go. So claim victory and depart the field. I also... I have to mention, just for the record, because I've forgotten to mention this, that you brought snacks, Kev. I brought snacks. That you well, actually watched the last episode. That's right. We had Pamela Horton on from uh, Gamer Next Door from Playboy. Yeah. And uh, she brought snacks, and you have brought snacks. I brought snacks. I felt like if Pamela's going to bring snacks, then I think that it's a good tradition for other guests. So, so next week's guests, or the guests who come down the road, bring hey. snacks. Hey, <laughs> Two in a row. There's a pattern going Kiff. on. 
Thanks for the heads up, man. I really Sorry, look Dave, like a jerk here. I am but he brought, more than, he brought <laughs> more than one back. He brought more than one back. So Dave you can, just, you can claim Dave one of those, Dave brought Harry Bowl raspberry right. gummies, which is my favorite. So that was really considerate of you, and thank <laughs> well, you for well, that. Again, I try to I tried to bring, a great guy. I, I thought it would be nice to bring something that you can chew and eat without making a ton of noise, but I brought half pops, which is a curiously crunchy popcorn. Yeah, exactly. Can we please get some more, yeah. frankly? Well, this is a quieter package, but a much smaller. why they tell you to open your mints before the show. Like, please open if you have any gum wrappers. I, I don't know why, but when I go to the movies, I'm always sitting next to or in front of or behind the person Starlight with the Starlight Mints. Oh, man. So, uh, Heroes of the Storm is a MOBA, which stands for Multiplayer Online Battle Arena Game. Are you familiar with this franchise or this uh, that, that genre at all, Kim? I'm familiar with the franchise. This, um, I, I, And I haven't done a lot of online gaming, truthfully, mostly because I'm on a Mac, which is like, I think I just made a lot of people angry. But uh, be, because I just don't. I'm a console gamer, so I, right. I, I'm pretty specifically a console gamer. My daughter likes Steam and loves playing Portal on Steam because she can build her own <laughs> maps. Right? That's why you, you're a huge fan of Portal. Hands uh, in the air for Portal. My, my eight-year-old daughter is joining <laughs> us, and she's wearing her WonderCon T-shirt. So if you see a hand sneak in and grab some cookies in front of Ben Moore, that's, <laughs> that's what's going on. <laughs> um, so I, I'm familiar with it, but I, I and and. Um, and I'm, I, I loved playing, there was a console game, oh, now I'm blanking completely on the name, but it was like vampires, and you were like a bunch of hunters, and it was for the original Xbox. And it was very cool, great four-player game. I, I love that this has opened up so many more folks to get together and play and have play parties and stuff, and... and I dig it. It's just and, not my speed. And professional players now. I really? Mean, oh, yeah. Uh, Esports is a big uh, deal. Uh, 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 Dota 2 and, and League of Legends and a number of these games have professional teams and championships and the winning teams are winning millions oh of God. dollars and they're like on a huge screen. Uh, yeah, I, I, like went to one, I went to a Dota yeah. 2 championship a, a couple of years ago. It was in Seattle. It was in the, the, the uh, uh, Civic Center. And it was a giant, like, movie screen. You got five players on one side, five players on the other. And then you got guys in the middle calling the game. And, oh, look, there's <laughs> Batrider. And he, yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. It was like Monday night football. I couldn't believe it. And the place was packed, you know, with two or 3,000 people watching these guys play. It was amazing. So did you get great. excited when you saw your character represented? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you rooting oh, for oh, him? Yeah. Oh, and, and I'm like, who's playing one of my characters? Right. Did you get to do any color commentary? like this? No. Like, kind of well, I wouldn't in? have known what the hell was going right. on. It, it happened like, so fast. You know? Oh, man. Yeah. yeah that's, it's not like there's sideline reporting. We're going to go to Michelle Tafoya on the yeah, sidelines right. to talk to Dave. Yeah. How's it feel to see your guy? It looks like your guy's getting beat up pretty bad. Well, you know, you got a noob handling right now. <laughs> yeah. So, so where do you get your gaming in? Where do you get your gaming news from, if at all, Dave? Well, I, you know, I, on the internet, uh, also talking to other game voices uh, and buddies mm -hmm. of mine, but I'll, I'll just researching, you know, oh, what's going on here? Ah, uh, and, and watching the business. Uh, I'm not a gamer myself, mm -hmm. but I love the gaming business, and one of the things that I've realized is that this is the biggest entertainment business in the world, quiet mm -hmm. as it's kept. Usually mm -hmm. we don't hear about it until one kid shoots another kid and says, ah, he's playing those violent yeah, video those games. games rah, 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 rah. Um, but the truth of the matter, we were talking about this before, that this is a real sea change in the human evolution of entertainment. For thousands of years, what did we do? Uh, we watched or listened to uh, somebody or watched a screen and maybe clapped at the end. But now with these narrative games where you can choose what happens within the game. That's completely new. This has never happened in, in human entertainment before. So, and it's, and it, we are at the, the, the beginning of this industry still. Yeah, I mean with what's, with the new developments in virtual reality. Yeah. Mm. And as technology is just gonna continue to enhance the storytelling experience. And the more interactive and the more engaging storytelling continues to explore and expand uh, the more immersive and fun it is for the players. Absolutely. You know, there's a great book called Everything Bad is Good for You about, um, and I'm trying to remember the author and it escapes me, but uh, I'll post it on Twitter. Look for it. Um, but it's a tremendous book that talks about how uh, in the 80s uh, you, could, you could follow an episode of Hill Street Blues from A, point A to point B to point C. But then, in the 90s and late or early 2000s, uh, you got 24. 
and you're juggling multiple screens and multiple storylines, four or five different cases going on, and you're keeping track of that as a viewer. Mm -hmm. That prepares us to be able to play the kind of games right now that the guys are playing. Right. To be able to process that level of information and not completely freak out. I, I, one of the things I see is how fast scenes cut anymore. Mm, yeah. uh, there used to be a time that scene would go on forever. And yeah, now it's, it's boom, boom, Doctor boom, Doctor Who boom. is a great example. If you watch an yeah. episode of Doctor Who from the 60s and then watch one from last season, yeah. it's hilarious. Like yeah. There's five-minute one-shot scenes from the old it Doctor Who. It makes your brain process information much quicker. Yeah. And it's capable of it. Yes. And we're, you know, when you look at a trailer, like I just watched the Fantastic Four trailer recently, and most of the clips in that thing are about <laughs> about a quarter to uh, to three quarters of a second long. And when you do when you do like voice matching or something like that, and they're trying to cover like, well, we don't have you know all of Sean Connery's lines here, so we need to make him say, you know. Uh, we need to stop this horrible thing. Right. But we have him say, we need to stop on camera. But they don't have horrible thing, they have some profane thing. So, so all you're trying to cover is this thing, and there's probably two shots within that bit. It's, it's amazing. That so people have absorbed more of your entertainment than they might possibly realize <laughs> over the yeah. years. Probably. Yes, we are deep and we are heavily grateful for it. Uh, really quick, we want to jump into our control room. Uh, Mr. Ian Hank is in the control room manning our TriCaster. How's the show going for hey, you, Ian? Pretty good so far. Uh, we had a little internet problem beforehand, but we fixed it. So. But every time we have a problem before GT Live, I'm happy about it because that means we'll not have that problem again, right? Right? Uh, and we're knows? done. We, we faced got... that problem. <laughs> so the so problem happens, does he get shocked or something? Uh, no, uh, we're working on shocking methods during the show, but before mm. the show, we're all just too busy oh, to okay. shock anybody. <gasps> <Understood>. <gasps> Uh, Huber's a different story, though. Huber gets shocked all the time. Yeah. So, uh... Taking it outside and just... Yeah. Flogged and... Get lashes. Dunked my head in the water one time. That's why you wear long sleeves, because of all the brands. Yeah. You don't want to see him. So, uh, Mr. Michael Huber is joining the stage for yeah. our next segment for number 11. I told you guys a little bit before the show that we have a segment called number 11, where we try to honor the, the one entry that did not make our top 10 list. Yeah. Our top 10 list for this week is the top 10 Mario power-ups which was, Kyle Bosman demanded this list. Kyle Bosman came into my office and he's like, we're doing it, that's it, that's our list for next week. I don't know what happened or what inspired it. And believe it or not, the Super Mushroom wound in at number 11. And I actually was a fan of this. I actually, I, I believe it was my uh, uh, decision making that, that put uh, uh, Super Mushroom at number 11. And, and I have a defense for it, but uh, I just want to give you, your, give, give you your chance to defend uh, the Super Mushroom on the grand tier of yeah. Mario Power Ups. First of all, the sound when you pick that mushroom up. Unmatched, the definitive sound in any Mario game ever made, picking up that super mushroom. It's synonymous with the franchise, and it just it goes back to the beginning. You get that mushroom, and in the earlier Marios, it had so much value, and it was so meaningful. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like it, it has slightly been diluted because there's so many power-ups. But that still doesn't change the fact that when you go back today to the original trilogy, the mushroom is empowering and it, and it is a very useful item and pickup. And I think I'm mostly annoyed with the frog suit making the list. That was also a uh, Kyle Spoilers! Bosman. Spoilers oh, for Mr. Huber. Oh, oh, I forgot. Spoiling. I, I, need, I need to use this. He is this so enraged. Though. He's spoiling entries <laughs> on the list. I need to use this argument because that frog suit is only useful at very specific points in the game. Right. When the mushroom is useful throughout. It's true. So wow. come on. It's a, it's a, can it's a compelling you, argument. Can you get the mushroom while you're wearing the frog suit? Wow. I think when you get hit, you just turn big. Right. So that was the argument. I think when you get the frog suit, it comes yeah. with a, kind of like a toy and a happy meal. Like it a like mushroom is with built the into the inside. frog suit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, Which just, diminishes the power and the prestige of a mushroom it does power. and that, that was the big argument that's why it ended up at num number 11 so because Huber. a lot of the power-ups you hit you get and you you still turn big after you get hit but i say no i say it doesn't matter i say the original mario's it's still a very useful item yeah. Hubert, you were up on this I stage agree. with two of the most accomplished voice actors in the business and you're not going to do a super mushroom sound effect you 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 you, 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 <laughs> demonstrated the, you demonstrated do the it. importance <laughs> of this sound effect i think we need it huber we're we're waiting 
Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. I want to hear you guys do it now. Boom, 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 whatever, yeah. man. I'm out of here. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, they have to pay us for that. Oh, you're right. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Well, sorry. That's that's my my agent would not allow me to. That was a line of code, brought, man. They brought snacks. They should brought snacks. I got to pick one. How does it go? Whoop, whoop, Like that? Yeah. Is that right? So, that was it was more of a warp, really, yeah. from Defender. Yeah. Uh, sorry, but it was in me. Yeah, so right. my yeah, so my case was, and I think we actually have a little bit of it B rolled it. There was those areas in Super Mario Bros. Three where you walk in, there'll be three treasure chests, yeah. and it's like. You know, what do you want out of those three? And, like, nobody goes over one of those treasure chests and is like, Super Mushroom, please, Super Mushroom. Like, I would always be disappointed. One pop out. It's like, oh, well, okay, I'll, I'll keep that with me. You know, like, I need it. I'm going to throw this in the hopper, though, because I agree with you. <laughs> it's like having a list of the top five James Bonds, and Connery's not on the list oh, because, because he's the oldest. Or because yeah. he's got less body hair than yeah. George Lazenby. Ooh. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. You wouldn't would you vote Lazenby? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. That, that's see. That's my reaction, though. That's yeah. Just yeah. Definitive uh, out of, power. Out of just like, because without it, what you got? Yeah. You got short little Mario grabbing a hammer. Yep. Trying to stop some crabs. Seriously. But that's. But see, that's one thing that actually comes up a lot when we pick uh, uh, countdowns. Is you know. Uh, nostalgia over functionality you know like do we love something because it's nostalgic because we just remember it fondly and you know like this is, this is iconic you think about you I, I, I'm sure you go to like tons of different foreign countries and you just show them that image of the mushroom and, oh Mario they'll know what that is right but does just because it's iconic just because it's nostalgic does that mean it's the best like when you ask if you're going into the battlefield of, maybe. of Mario levels maybe yeah. is that going to be older your voice go-to? actors I think both of us <laughs> are big fans yeah. of yeah. nostalgia yeah, nostalgia <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> <That's> awesome <laughs> I think I think this crowd is playing to you, Huber. I think. Yeah. That's right. There you go. Um, are there any? I mean, in, in your experience, surely you've played a Mario game at some point oh, in yeah. your life, oh, Dave. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, are, there, are there any uh, power-ups that you prefer out of, out of your grand pantheon? The I'm hammer. sorry. I'm a Donkey Kong devotee. I spent more money on Donkey Kong than I spent on college <laughs> in eighth grade at the roller skating rink. At Woodland Roller Skating Rink, when everyone was, when the girls were choosing boys, I was in the arcade playing Donkey Kong. You were choosing Princess Peach. <laughs> That's right. I was trying to save a girl from from a very crazy gorilla who was right. throwing barrels at us, and and I could and and if and if I beat that first level, it was a huge win. So the power up for me was always was always a well placed hammer when I needed it, so that I could stop a Firefox from. Uh, so from, rather from than burning. life, a metaphor for life. Yeah, I think that's about right. Whoa. Yeah, Have yeah, you yeah. seen a, a Fistful of Quarters? Yes. The documentary about the people yeah. trying to, to Those guys beat. are wasting their lives. Yeah. <laughs> I well, stopped at eighth grade. No, I think it's awesome. I love, I love that obsession to trying to beat or be the best at that game. And it's a fact. I mean, I love Donkey Kong Jr. too. I, 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 it just, it, it's zeitgeist, man. It hit me at the right time. It's like I had, I had disposable income. I was a paper boy. So I, I had quarters oh, in a man. bag from collecting, and I would spend Saturdays collecting and then drive to the laundromat. Drive. Ride my bike to the laundromat <laughs> and, uh, and then play kangaroo and track and field. Talk about <laughs> nostalgia. Oh, yeah, man. Paper boy. You better believe it. Back when Paper they allowed boy. it. That before a grown men with cars took the job. Right. Back when it was, you know. Yeah, go yeah. door to door. Paperboy yeah. 2015 reboot. You're like That's a band right. just throwing papers chuck, out chuck, the window. Chuck. Smoking camel legs, <laughs> chucking your papers out there. It's nuts. So they had Paperboy reboot, and you got cast as the Paperboy. That would be kind of be things coming full circle. There you go. That would be great. It's sort of a sort of a Vince Vaughn, John C. Riley uh, <laughs> personal redemption story of a I guy who finds himself. Yeah. And, and, paper and you realize, of course, that what we do for a living is revenge for all the times they told us, you're wasting your time. Those crazy voices are never going to do anything you for you. Study hard. Don't you want to be a doctor or a lawyer or something? <laughs> That it's seems right. like the first voice you do is the person that says you shouldn't be a voiceover artist. That seems like the first one. <laughs> Where would complain at you most in your youth? Like, oh. Yeah, people who tell you that you can't do it are, are uh, you know, they, they don't see it. Right. They yeah. can't see it. They don't have the vision. I, I, can't, I can't, you know, begrudge those people their life experience that would keep them from saying, you can't make a living doing this. It seems improbable coming from Cutlerville, Michigan. But, um, but, uh, Life finds a way. And when you look at you look at the world now, uh, the jobs of ten years ago don't exist now. That's right. So you know, who who's to say? You know, if uh, if if I have a well, I do have a kid. She has a kid. But that, that kid, my grandkid, 
Uh, whatever he wants to do, if he has a passion for it, yeah. I'm going to encourage him because you don't know where your passion is going to take you. But if you're living your passion, life is going to be good. That's right. That's absolutely you right. hear that, Hubert? Yeah. Live your passion. Live your passion. Oh, yeah. We need Keep you fighting. to have more passion here at Game Trailers, Hubert. I don't Hubert. know. I don't know. Yeah, this guy. <laughs> Boy, we, you, you picked the right people to defend your, your super right. mushroom <laughs> argument. Thank you so much, Hubert, yeah. for coming up. Thank you, uh, Hubert. So we got a quick uh, trailer that we're going to cut away to. Some love for Just Cause 3 from Kiff for the show I've started. I've already pre-ordered it oh, at GameStop. Man. They don't even have a date, and yeah. I put five bucks down on it. I'm a huge Just Cause fan. we got a gameplay reveal. I actually, uh, was, we're GameTrailers.com, so we're super critical on trailers sometimes. Sure. I'm, I'm not the game itself, but the actual art of the trailer. Of so course. I might have had some critical things to say, but this trailer is still badass. Badass trailer, you guys. Just Cause 3, check it out. Okay, we... Just Cause 3. Pre-order now to secure the exclusive weaponized vehicle pack. Coming holiday 2015. Kiff's just jumping in his seat. I'm for that, so excited. Man. That looks amazing. Yeah, it's pretty bonkers. I was going to say, like, you know, it's one thing if we can be critical about how a trailer's edited or maybe what they should show versus what they shouldn't. But, I mean, you tow cable a bus onto a jet and you're like, okay. I'll buy it. Yeah, okay, shut up and take my money. I mean, come on. That's why, you're, that's why you're there. That's why you play Just Cause. So you can topple a statue on the back of a, of a tuk-tuk. So I have a special request from you guys. We chatted about it a little bit beforehand. Uh, so there's a, there's a show that I've always wanted to do uh, that uh, our own Elise Willems has dubbed Cutscene Theater. And this is taking old 8-bit and 16-bit games. Basically, you were talking about a voiceover with like the, the mid-90s is when you know, voiceover really started to become prevalent in games. So everything before that. All these old games never got a chance to have voiceover mm. and uh, never got a remake. Uh, so if, if you guys wouldn't mind, I got a scene queued up from uh, two scenes, rather. Well, wait, uh, the, let me check with my agent. Right. Yeah, <laughs> right there, please. Okay? Can okay. We get the, do we have everything she signed? She says okay. okay. Yeah. She's sending yeah. over the contracts. Uh, so we have the beginning of King's Quest One, and uh, which will go directly into the end of King's Quest One, okay. and the and the beginning of King's Quest Two. So, ladies and gentlemen, Kim Van and Hubel, Dave Fenoy, <laughs> King's Quest <laughs> Cutscene Theater. Here we, Here we go. go. <clears throat> Cutscene. The huge doors swing open slowly. Oh, oh, damn. When you bow to King Edward, his pleased smile warms you. When you speak to King Edward, he sighs and says, Sir Graham, I am an old man. I fear my end is near. I have chosen you to prove yourself worthy of the throne. As you know, our kingdom is weak and poor. I have knowledge of the existence of three things that would make our kingdom wealthy and strong. Somewhere within our kingdom there is a magic mirror that tells the future. There is a magic shield that will protect the bearer from mortal harm. Finally, there is a magic chest that is filled with gold cords. Go, Sir Graham. Go and bring me back these treasures. Yes, sir. If you succeed, you will inherit the throne. All right. Oh, oh. Time passes. Oh, my hat, bloody hell. When you bow to King Edward, his pleased smile warms you. Once again, you move aside as the king steps from his throne. Yes, sir. As you approach the throne, the king himself rises to commend you for a job well done. Oh, oh, oh. 
the king proclaims in pain. From the seemingly lifeless king, you hear these words. Well done, Sir Graham. You have been a good and faithful servant. Your reward is well deserved. My kingdom is now yours. With those words, King Edward the Benevolent dies. <clears throat> the experiences of your quest will be invaluable to you as you begin your reign as King of uh, Daventry. Bravo! <laughs> Romancing the throne. <laughs> bravo, bravo. Sir Graham is now King of Daventry. Under his wise rule, Daventry is prosperous. He is loved by his people. Yay. Unfortunately, there is a problem. King Graham needs a queen for companionship and to provide an heir to the throne. He has searched high and low for the right maiden, but he remains alone. An idea comes to him. <laughs> he goes to the magic mirror and stares longingly into its depths. It's portal. He sees a vision of a quartz tower. To reach it, he must pass through a magic door in the nearby land of Kolyama. The scene then changes to show a beautiful girl locked within the tower. Graham now knows what to do. And my Robin Hood hat. <laughs> and it's night. That cutscene. Cutscene theater. Thank you. Well Thank played, you. sir. Well played, sir. Ah, it's deeply moved, deeply Bravo. moved by your death. Sad passing. So uh, I, I just want to throw out to people in the chat are mentioning this is a very spoilerific episode of, uh, of GT Live. We have spoiled the ending of King's Quest 1. You, <laughs> sir, spoiled Bioshock for everybody. What? Or, uh, Bioshock Infinite. At uh, what point? There's some secrets to your character, sir. Oh, you there are? You do not know when you're playing Bioshock Infinite. Oh, I didn't realize I had ruined that Jones, for people. That's what people happens when you don't get the whole script. Yeah, I guess that's and exactly right. And we have uh, right. also spoiled uh, one of the entries on our uh, Top 10 Countdown. So uh, viewers beware. What? I'm sorry, what, Ian? And Evil Within. And we also spoiled Evil Within. Well, oh, yeah. you did. Yeah, I guess. Okay, well, I spoiled that one. Because it's hard? We're on a tear. <laughs> no, I mentioned that your, your character doesn't, uh, oh, doesn't make nah. it out of the game. Well... But he's like the guy standing next to the guy standing next to the main hero in a horror game. Like, come That's on. That's right, yeah. He, he might as well be wearing spoiler. a red shirt. Listen, when, I mean, when you see M for a mature and barbed wire wrapped around the face of a screaming guy, don't assume that anyone's getting out alive. <laughs> uh, I also want to point out that uh, I thought, you know, let's, let's go really old school. We you know, with cutscene theater. Let's pick something original. I actually want to uh, give a shout out to my wife, uh, uh, Amanda Troop, who's, oh, yeah, who's Amanda in Troop. chat right now, who recommended the original King's Quest. I love it. And said there's a great, I said, I mean, good dramatic work between two men. She said, <laughs> King's Quest 1, you know. Uh, Sir Graham goes in and uh, speaks to the king immediately. And while I was perusing your IMDb page, uh -oh. Dave, I found that you were in a King's Quest. What? King's Quest 6, Air Today, Gone Tomorrow. You were a pawn shop owner. Oh, yeah. I kind of sort of remember. It's all that. coming back to you, right? <laughs> yes, okay. it's all coming back to me. Yeah, dang it. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, so hopefully you guys have been asking us really good questions throughout the show. Mr. Kyle Bossman has been taking your questions. Uh, we are now going to throw the questions violently at our two VO guests. Uh-oh. And uh, we're going to pick the three best questions, and we're going to give you codes for Heroes of the Storm, which Ben Moore has been diligently playing this entire time. How how, how you been doing really quick, Kyle? Sorry, uh, before we get going. Uh, ben, how, how's your win record uh, for this so GG we've, Live? We've played one match live. We won. Okay. I didn't die. So it was good. You didn't die the good. whole time. I didn't die. Wow. I just died now, though, so I'm kind of, okay. kind of jinxing myself. <laughs> so but, now that uh, we're actually talking to you, now, that you're, now you're distracted and now you're dying. I died now. once. Uh, this, w it's really close. This game could go either way, Brandon. I'm getting kind of nervous. I just... You're alive! So we'll alive. probably... Oh. Oh. Is that... Okay, so that's your death. The match isn't oh. over, though. So you might win this one, and then if we start a new one, that match probably won't be over by the time the GT Live finishes. Unfortunately, no. So this is a major commitment. You yeah. know, this isn't just like some handheld game that you can play in your spare time or something. You can just jump in, and five minutes later, you're out. That's right. This isn't. You got to commit. Too. Right. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. I, I like the word commitment. Oh, good. Commitment. That's what it is. You're in. How, you're how are our questions, in. Mr. Bosman? Questions have been great. Great. Lots of, yeah, just. Uh, VO, VA oriented questions. So we have a ton. Uh, All right. Let's are you do ready it. for them? Shall we go? Bring Shall it. we launch these? Bring it on, baby. What you got? Okay. Let's do let's do a serious one first. All right. Okay. Which game that you had a voice in affected you the most? Be it that it launched your career or you have the fondest memories of. And that's from Carl Carlston. That's a moving question. Carl. Yeah. I'll tell you I'll Throw. I'll say Bioshock Infinite 
in particular in uh, when we did the, the day I still remember very vividly and, and always will was the day I went to Boston after doing six or seven Skype sessions. Uh, I finally went to Boston to go just work with Ken. We went in the whisper room and we pretty much got all the audio logs and, and everything in that day. I'm sorry to stop you already. What's the whisper room? A whisper room is a small box that we go in and record in. And it does a great job of isolating all the sound outside it keeps the sound inside very dead, so you just get really clean voice. Cool. Uh, so a whisper room is like that. And a lot of times whisper rooms are very small. Uh, the one at, at Irrational was a little bit larger, so there was room for at least five, or five of us to be in there. But it was just me and Ken, and he shared with me some of the things going on in the game, and we found the character. And at the previous sessions, I think we struggled to kind of figure out what Comstock was gonna sound like and what his feeling was. And in my last session here, during Skype, he's you know he was like I, I'm trying to figure out how to get this this read down right, and uh, he was listing comps and mentioned Harrison Ford and Mosquito Coast as a as a comparable character to him. It really resonated with me. So I got to Boston. I got on a red eye after working a shift at Disneyland. I work at Disneyland uh, as well, and I got into went into Irrational. And uh, saw Ken, and we went into the room, and I was like, before we begin, I said, you said Harrison Ford and Mosquito Coast, and I think I know where to go. Can I try something? He was like, oh, my God, please. So the one of the scenes that you see uh, uh, Comstock in, we, we matched that. And he was like, that's it. That's the character. That's the voice. It has the love that he needs to have for Elizabeth, but it also has the villain uh, without being too preachy. Uh, and it just felt real. It was a really satisfying piece of work. So I think of all the things that I've done to this point in my career, it's one of my favorite things, both in terms of on camera and off. Um, that day in, in Boston with Ken Levine in the Whisper Room was, uh, was kind of top of the mountain. I hope they don't just cut that day with Ken Levine in the Whisper Room. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. That would no, be not. so misinterpreted. Actually, it really will be. Yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, uh, for me, I'd have to say the Walking Dead game, playing Lee Everett. Um, the first day, I, I, they flew me up to uh, Fairfax, uh, California, and the first day in the booth, uh, I got the script, and within you know 15 minutes or so, I knew this was something special. This was something different. Uh, up until that point, it had been a lot of games. Usually I was uh, with some crazy voice from some crazy monster or you know evil character or whatever uh soldier this that and the other and this was just a guy this was just me uh i related to the character uh if you know the story zombie apocalypse uh he meets a little girl who uh her parents were out of town when the apocalypse happens and he takes it upon himself to take care of her, which redeems him because he was on his way to jail for murder. He found his wife messing around and <laughs> killed her and the lover and he thought his life was over and this was, gave him a chance to redeem himself. But he was, he was a regular guy and uh, because the game did so well, uh, despite the fact that I'd been in probably 80 games by then, um, it gave me notoriety that I never had before. It was like being that character actor that gets a nomination for an Oscar, win or don't win, doesn't matter now, you know, you, you, you're remembered for that role. Mm -hmm. uh, so, playing Lee Everett in the Walking Dead game. Cool. Good stuff. Yeah, excellent answers. Uh, here's one, it's, it's a little less serious. <laughs> this is from Uramia. Have you ever played a game you were in and ended up hating your character? <laughs> You ever, have you ever like seen yourself in a game and say, oh, I hate this? <laughs> you don't have to be specific because we don't want to burn any bridges, but I'm curious if that's ever happened to you. You know, I, I think this happens to a lot of actors. Um, you'll watch your performance and you're, oh, God, I could have done that better. Oh, that, mm -hmm. Why'd they use that take? Uh, oh, I'm not liking how I sound. You know, uh, we can be so hypercritical of ourselves um, so a lot of times that happens that you, you're watching something that other people, oh man, you were so good in that. And you're going, God, I really sucked in this. Yeah. That was the take they printed. Um, but you know, I'm listening for different things. It's happened. 
certainly, but um, and, and not just in video games. Like it's happened in in commercial work and feature work. It it, it it happens from time to time that you feel like ah, that wasn't my best work, um, but it's part of the collaborative process that you have to trust the people who are who are making the decisions that that's the story they're telling and I'm providing a service and they're going to choose what they need to put in there and that's fine. So and when, yeah. you, when you think about it, all your favorite actors have been in some dogs. Yeah. <laughs> I was pointing to Dave saying that's true, not pointing to Dave. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it like seemed like guy. that. <laughs> Cuz those 80 credits he mentioned, <laughs> right? They can't all be great games. They can't be no, they great can't. games, you know? Yeah, yeah that's exactly. Right. Um <laughs> Here's one, here's one I'm, I find actually a very interesting question. This is from Sync Cognition. Sync Cognition, one word anyway. Uh, have you done much work on games that were localized from Japanese? And if so, did you encounter any situations that required some explanation of the cultural differences or language idiosyncrasies to be able to deliver the lines convincingly? That's a fascinating question. Yeah. Um, when I did The Evil Within, all the motion capture had been performed by Japanese artists. So what we were matching, in, and this isn't a spoiler, it's just in the very beginning of the game, all that is mocap. And um, so we were shown the footage of what the actors were doing and hearing their dialogue that they said on stage uh, when they did him, but then interpreting the emotional content of what they were doing, matching it to a New York cop versus a Tokyo cop, which is a radically different transition. So uh, it was very important to have the information uh, informing what emotional state the characters were at, how we were reacting, and how to honor the performance of those artists as well, even though that had been done so long ago in a different environment. So from my experience, I've, um, it, it's, it's a unique challenge because it's just another thing to think about. Often you just start with a script and you go, who's this character? And, how do I feel about him? How does he feel about everybody else? But in this context, you're building off of some other artist's work and kind of uh, agreeing with what they've established and, and heightening it and helping to tell the story in a different way. Sometimes the biggest problem is matching the lip flap. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> that, that can be. I, I, I haven't done a whole lot of anime, some, but uh, playing Road in, in uh, Bayonetta. Cool. Um, Oh, hey, somebody likes that game. Oh, ben, yeah, Ben reviewed that. Um, that was Ben's favorite game for last and, year. And, and that had, was a, a Japanese game yeah. that was translated over here. So there, there were a few little idiosyncrasies that you had to get straight, but um, we worked it out. Very cool. Uh, here's a question. Have you ever – no, I'm going to skip that one. <laughs> this is from Rick and Robo. The VO community seems to be a fairly small but talented bunch. When a buddy lands a role – that you were going for and really wanted, is it ever difficult to be happy for them or does one's own pride ever lead way to jealousy? You know, I, I think sometimes um, there can be a, a little bit of both that you can be disappointed that you didn't get the gig but you can also be happy for your friend that did. Um, I have been doing this a long time, we have been doing this a long time and I, I, I think we kind of live by the philosophy we're gonna get our share of yeah. work. Um, and of course there are games that you audition for that you, you, you send in your audition, you thought it was, oh, this is great, I know I'm gonna book this, and you don't. Uh, I sometimes teach, and one of the things I, I tell students is, it doesn't matter that your read was perfect, somebody else's read is perfect too, and that's the one that speaks to the person making that casting decision, you know. So, but you're gonna, make sure you're doing the best work you can do and, and work is gonna come your way. You're gonna get some wonderful things. Don't leave any money on the table in the room. At the end of the day, it's not about what anybody else does. It's what you do when you're in that room in that audition. And who the people choose is up to them. Yeah. I'm a vendor. And if someone is deciding to have Coke versus Pepsi, there's no judgment on Pepsi if they decide to go with Coke. Yeah. Maybe someone was from Atlanta. Who knows? But all I know is when I go into that room, I need to be prepared and have my, have my, my, just have my stuff buttoned up. And uh, moving to Los Angeles helped me redefine my notion of success. Success isn't booking the job. It's great, but success is getting into a room. Success is my agent deciding that I could be considered to play Batman, 
for a moment. And for a moment, I get to go into a, into a room in front of another person and read Batman and not get cast. But for that moment, I was Batman. And I got to be considered and someone got to hear it. Yeah, you know, a friend of mine posted on Facebook that you know she auditioned for a big comedian and he loved her and chose her, but then they cut the role out. And it's like, the only thing you can cling to is that the person that you respected, loved, and chose her. But you know, what do you do? That's, that's showbiz. That's showbiz. Shake, shake your fist at the Hollywood sign. I, I tell uh, <laughs> wannabe actors, wannabe voiceover actors, that the real work is auditioning. Uh, that's, that's what you have to do. Once you get the gig, it's fun. It's just then, you, <laughs> then, then it, it's just a gas. Audition well, and and I like what you said. Don't leave any money on the table. Bring everything into that audition. Uh, another favorite saying of mine is: there are no auditions. There are only performances. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's excellent. I've yeah. never heard that before. That's a really good way to phrase like that. that. I also like shake your fist at the Hollywood sign. I think that needs to be a podcast. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I think that sounds good. I, I, I don't want. I don't like the notion of. I stumbled upon this the other day. The notion of rejection that we talk about all the time of like, I was, this town is full of rejection. That's a lie, that is a myth. I'm not being rejected if I'm not selected. Yeah. That's not a rejection of my auditions. That's not a rejection of 4,000 other actors who are considered for that role. That's not a rejection of the 25 guys who managed to get into the room. That's not a rejection of the, of the eight or nine or 25 people that auditioned who are at the top of their game and sent in and ultimately there's one role. That's not a rejection. That is you weren't selected. And there is a difference in that. Future. Rejection is to be chewed and spit out. Right. That's not happening. Yeah. And, and I think when people use that as a crutch of like, well, just I can't take all this rejection. Well, maybe you can't, being, can't take being told that you're not as special as you thought you were, but did you do your best? And if you did your best, go home and sleep well. Because, you and know, if not, get feet. in your hoopty and drive back to the little town you came from. That's right. <laughs> Whoa! That's right. If you're not prepared to do the work and you're not prepared to push yourself, I'm turning into John Malkovich. If you're not prepared to work harder than anyone else, then expect to go home empty-handed. But it's, it's, what, it's what it takes yeah. to do this work. And everyone here, everyone here, especially, especially guys in VO, um, animation and video games are the best in the world and to be able to sit at a table with one of the best in the world and have some of the best in the world be close friends is success and to be considered to go up for that stuff is success and you've got to redefine that you know there's an interesting thing that happens uh in video games you're always working by yourself Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes you don't even know who's on the game with you until uh, much, much later on. And we don't know each other well, but there is an immediate camaraderie yeah. because I know how good he is. A, I've heard his work, and B, he's here. Yeah. He's here. So there, there's a thing, uh, I, I think, with us, with voice over time, when you run into somebody, maybe you haven't met them before, but you know their work, you know who they are. There's an instant closeness, an instant camaraderie, an instant understanding of, of being in this, this same uh, uh, league together. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know what you went through because I've gone through it. That's right. So they're all friends. It's all warm and fuzzy feelings. Yeah, I, no? yeah I love that. <laughs> I feel like you two were talking to me directly. So does everyone in chat. I always appreciate <laughs> Good. it. Good. Because I do. I absolutely get that feeling of like when my friends are successful, I'm like so jealous. I'm a very <laughs> jealous person. It's and too it, It's too rare. I, yeah. It's rare that someone you know gets that gig. Yeah. 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 You know, and when you get to know those guys and you're like, oh, man, that's going to be, that's well, whoever nailed yeah. it. Awesome. He's at our agency. That's good for my agency. That's good for my agent. That takes heat off of me. You know what I mean? And the other part of it is, it's, it's what Dave was saying too, like in, in the smaller markets when you're coming up, like when a national thing came through, it was such a big deal that you really clamor for it. But when you get to a place in Los Angeles where there's so much production, so many things are coming through the pipe, it's not that it doesn't matter, it absolutely matters. You want to win everything you go after. But um, if you don't, you really can go, 
you know what? It's all right. The sun's coming up. Tomorrow's going to be another day. And maybe I'll get to be additional voices on that game. Maybe I'll get to do ADR on it. Maybe they'll do a sequel of it. Maybe I'll get to voice match the guy when they do the game trailer. Maybe, maybe I wasn't meant to be on that and that guy needs it. Or maybe I've got a conflict and I'm just too busy to do the schedule. Claim victory and depart the field. I'm feeling pretty successful just standing at the table with these guys. How about you? I feel, Kyle? no, I feel very underaccomplished. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I don't work hard enough. I feel like I don't want hard enough. I feel like I got to refocus. Uh, we did, we have a lot of questions from people who want to do VO, who want to be a part of it. Uh, so that was, that was huge. That was a, that was a very uh, general thing. Let's get, here's one is very specific. Uh, this is from Shane Zidi. As a voice actor, is there a specific union you belong to? And uh, was there a specific amount of VO work to achieve membership, uh, much similar to how other actor and theater unions work? Um, well, we're, we're both uh, SAG-AFTRA. Yep. Uh, used to be two unions we were in. Now it's one. <laughs> uh, and the very best work is going to come through uh, SAG and AFTRA. Uh, and in the gaming world, uh, this is very new. Uh, you know, a few years ago, there weren't that many uh, companies that were hiring union talent, and there were some union talent that were doing some mm. games uh, under the table. What would you do? Uh, like but by, the, by the same token, uh, they weren't really covered one way or the other. It was kind of a this, don't this ask, don't nebulous tell. Gotcha. world that you were living in. Um, well, now as uh, the gaming industry is growing, uh, they're looking for the very best voice actors they can get, and the very best voice actors they can get tend to be union actors, uh, and those great voice actors out there who aren't union yet, you just have to keep going. Yeah. Um, just it, work. Is it yeah, a matter, work. is it a just thing work. where you have to like put in hours and work on different things yeah. and then eventually you I mean, become yeah. union? If, 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 I, if I said, uh, and it's not, like, it's not like with equity where you, you have to earn a certain amount of points to get in. If you book a union job, then you have, the way it works is you're something called Taft-Hartley. So you have a, a month to do as much union and non-union work as you can book. And then after one month, you become must join, which means the next time you do a union job, you gotta spend three grand to, uh, for your initiation to join the union, and then you can do that work, and then you may no longer do non-union work at all. So that's the nature of it. The trade-off with there is that the union work is, it's it pays great. better. Pays better, I get insurance through my union, I get pension through my union, I get to be part of a union. Somebody to collect your money for you, That's so you right. don't. Have, hey, you know that check you were supposed to send me? To, <laughs> look, I'm, I got to pay my rent, man. I, you know, I, I really need my money, man. But my advice to someone who wants to get started is do it where you are. Yeah. I started in Toledo, Ohio, and not in on hold messaging. I was, I would like, I worked for this company called Business Voice. They're still there today, and I would get paid twenty five dollars a script to do on hold messaging for companies like the Binkelman Corporation. My, my, in my, in, I don't know if I'm gonna get in trouble for mentioning their names, but like, I, I mean, I, I, my literally, because I did impressions, they were like, we love that you do impressions. Will you do Sean Connery for us? Thank you for calling the Binkelman Corporation. If you want to speak to customer service, press one. Like that's work. <laughs> was, that, was, that, was that your, your best worst job? No, my best worst <laughs> job, <laughs> my best worst job was when I played a coffee cup in, um, Live action, played a coffee cup on the corner of uh, West 110th Street, Lorraine in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, after doing, Cleveland. did you really? Oh, God. It was February and we had this, it was a promotion for Dunkin' Donuts. And we, um, I got a call from my agent. It was like, hey man, uh, we got a gig for you tomorrow. It's, uh, so I, I would already, I've already sag after it. Uh, SAG and AFTRA at that point when they were separated, and Equity. I had uh, worked on the Second City main stage. I had written original shows, and I had already done the Rockstar Games. I had already done Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition. So I was feeling kind of full of myself. And uh, we were broke. We were broke in Cleveland. And Cleveland was a tough market because there was very, very little union work. So when I would chase union work, I had to drive to either Pittsburgh or Detroit. So I would drive to Detroit probably three times a week uh, to audition, which is a six-hour round trip. So like a commute from the Valley to the Santa Monica, <laughs> forget it, nothing. But anyway, I get the phone call. Listen, we got a gig for you tomorrow morning from 6 to 7.30. You're going to play, uh, you're going to hand out samples of this drink at, um, at Dunkin' Donuts. So my wife and I agreed. We took it. We went over there and we walked in and the lady was like, great. Uh, who's going to play Cuppy? Oh, God. <laughs> play Cuppy? Cuppy. Cuppy. Uh, what's Cuppy? Cuppy is our mascot, our corporate mascot. 
Um, okay. So I look at the three of us. It's me. It's my wife. Well, I'm not going to condemn to that. And then this, this lovely little old lady. So I'm like, well, I guess I'm going to play cuppy. I'm dressed to be inside. But, uh, but she has her hatchback. And she pulls out the cuppy costume, and it's the thinnest foam rubber you can imagine, and it's two hula hoops inside. And it's February. And, it, and it's February. And it's Cleveland. And it's Cleveland. So it's snow, and it's freezing. And, and I said at one point, it's like, what does Cuppy say? Trying to salvage something? And she said, nothing. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> cuppy, cuppy is a genderless mute. Oh. Which, which but isn't you know, a nice thing to say it. to someone. When you're outside and it's that cold and your breath, you can see it. It That's looks true. like hot coffee. It looks like hot coffee. Yeah. yeah. So I'm standing there as traffic is going by, waving at traffic, and I'm doing, now is the winter of our discontent. You know, this kind of stuff. <laughs> and I turn to my wife. This is the lesson. This is why it's the best worst job. Yeah. Uh, I was, we're seeing lots of Cuppy love in chat. I don't oh know. Oh, yeah, a lot of people good. are digging Hey, cuppy. man, listen, I'm not throwing shade on Cuppy. I'm throwing shade on myself inside a Cuppy with an attitude about it. This is what I learned. I said to, I said to my wife through this googly eyes and my four fingers, uh, this is the worst job I've ever had. And at that moment, a car pulls up. A guy gets out, and he's got a three-year-old little girl. And the little girl runs over to me like this and hugs me around the waist. Aww. And he goes, oh, man, you just made her day. Come on, sweetie, let's go inside. And I looked at, back at my wife, who stand there to protect me from kids throwing snowballs. And I realized <laughs> it was that if, if I'm an actor, my job is to play roles. And I may not get the audience. I may not like the audience. I may not understand that audience. But my duty is to play that character even if that audience is for a three-year-old little girl in Cleveland who needs something to entertain her while her dad gets a donut and a coffee. You know she's That's watching the this stream right now. Oh, it's good. Just like, <gasps> awesome. She's like 10 now. Maybe she watches Richie Rich. I right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your duty That's right. is to play that like, guy. We're, we're running a little bit long. I think we have time for one more question. Okay, let's do one more question. Oh, uh, my gosh. I, we can't make it too complicated then. Um, ooh, this is a saucy one, too. This is from oh. Tongue Surgery. Ooh. Have you ever conflicted with any voice directors or anybody like that on what a character should say or feel? You that know, you obviously I, can't mention. Yeah. You know, I, not, in, in, not in the gaming world. I, mm. I've, I've had that in the commercial world uh, where I recall being in a session uh, where, you know, as a voice actor, you, you also become a voice director and you have to learn how to direct yourself. And uh, I remember being in a studio, and uh, it was a big job. It was going to be on a network. And I gave him what I knew it should be, and the director wanted something else. Wh what he should have done was hired somebody else. He should have mm. hired somebody that that's what they did. Uh, but he had hired me, so I gave him what I do. And you know, I kept trying to adjust and adjust. And uh, finally, he directed me into this read that I knew sucked. And uh, I didn't, and I lost the job. I mean, they ran it for a day, and then it was over, and they brought somebody else in. And I knew when I was doing it that, at, but I, I wasn't confident enough in myself at that time. I would, had been in LA maybe a year. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't confident enough in myself to say, "Look, that's not what I do. This sounds terrible. Either go with the the read I I, I, I gave you, or." You know, hire somebody else, but what you're trying to get me to do is not going to sound right coming from me. I got to know, like, what was it? What, what I were can't they... tell you. I know. <laughs> oh, I'm so <laughs> curious now. I Thank you for pushing, Kyle. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. I mean, the, the closest, I think, for me was, was during Bioshock when we were trying to find Comstock. I mean, it was, um, there's a scene in, I don't want to spoil, but there's a scene that no, had been. No, spoil it. It's been out this, for a while. It has been. That yeah. was my attitude. So, like, there's a scene that was motion captured and animated and done. Mm -hmm. And it was done to a different voice actor. So I was locked into the movement. And um, so I was trying to match the movement and match the intonation, but add more. And I think we were just, we were still trying to find the character. And I remember I was just at the beginning during our chat, I was recommending some, some uh, herbal, um, uh, Herbal Some supplements. Herbal stuff, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. Herbal supplements called Chico and Curcuma, which helped restore my voice. And it was after this particular session. They're called Chico and Curcuma? Chico and Curcuma is, uh, is, um, 
It's a supplement for tumor reducing and for blood masses, and it helps with your vocal cords to recover after vocally stressful sessions. Cool. She said her primary customer is Chicago bartenders. At any rate, um, <laughs> so um, so I did this session, and literally one of the one of the directions was um, maybe because what he's been saying is so cancerous that his mouth is horribly deformed from the cancer and it, it plans out in his, in, because the words that Comstock says are so horrible that it, maybe it has this character. And they we modified things, but I'm yelling and dying Ooh. with this sort of Tom Waits. And I can do a Tom Waits thing without shredding my pipes, but it was still like, it was, it was the combination of the frustration of not giving them what they wanted and really wanting to please and really struggling to just get it. And then, and, and we just ran out of time. And I, I walked out of that session and taken off like, it was, it was crazy because just because the technology is such that, you know, you wanted to have a stereo. So I'm wearing a baseball cap with two lobs on it for right and left channel. And then I'm working with a shotgun mic and then there's a Skype going on and I've got wires all over my body. And it's just, and I like working without headphones and I'm wearing headphones and all those things were just like, Working just, against you. Right. And I think that was part of the reason why the Whisper Room was so comforting was I got to take all that crap off. Right. It was just me and the microphone and my director. And, 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 uh, and it was the space that, you, that we did have the time to explore. So it, it, without a doubt, there's frustration from time to time. But, um, but you have to work through that by trusting your instincts and trusting, and trusting the team. You know, it's, it's like you said, like sometimes you're going to run into directors who don't either get you or they miscast you and you do the best you can. But ultimately, it's like I'm not that guy. And you know in your heart and you have the confidence to say, I'm not that guy. You know who is that guy? I got five friends who are that guy. But that's just not me. I can't do a Tom Cruise impression. I don't know anyone who can. I know one guy who can, but I don't know him personally. But like, you know. <laughs> When that thing comes down, I'm like, call that guy. He can do it. Do, do you still have Comstock in your brain? Like, can you, sure. Is that something you can call? Uh, the seed of the prophet shall sit the throne and bathe and flame the mountains of man. Yeah. Ooh. Bro, we bro. Had, yeah, I, bro, I'm bro. just seeing this come up in chat a bunch. Like, I know it's... I know it's cheap, you know, but can we, can we, can we, can we get it? Can we get a little Lee as well, just for the fans? Do you have... Clementine, keep your hair short. Don't trust anybody. I, I know you can do it. Ah, <laughs> oh, so good, so good. I mean, I don't know. That's 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 the the sadness of it is you guys will never know the 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 warmth in our hearts that we feel from you guys doing these amazing voices and all of the work that you've done. Uh, I, but still, in everything that I've seen you done, I love Bioshock Infinite. Your Bill Murray, it just just kills. Thank Kay? you. Your Bill Murray is, <laughs> my, so much. is my absolute favorite. Thank you very much. I'm proud. I, I love doing Bill Murray. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that is it. Really quick before we wrap things up, I want to tell you guys at home all of the awesome stuff that we have coming up on GameTrailers.com this week. We already talked and spoiled part of the top 10 Mario power-ups. Um, of course, we have our regular staple of shows. We have the final bossman from our, our friend uh, Kyle Bossman here, who also is the moderator for GT Time, which we will be recording tomorrow. Mandatory update will return this weekend. Huber hype this week. What do you, what's, what's Huber hype this week? Huber? What was your topic for on Huber hype? This week? Uh, yeah. Dead franchises. Dead franchises. need to be revived. Uh, so yeah, one of the things that Huber is very hyped about, franchises that are dead and need to come back. Uh, the bonus round this weekend is going to talk about anticipated games of 2015 for the rest of 2015. Uh, we got some good Just Plates coming up. Uh, we, you and myself and Mr. Daniel Bloodworth sat down to talk about Street Pass games, yeah, which we were very excited about. New Street Pass games that came 3DS, and uh, we're also going to be chatting about the new DLC that came to Mario Kart. Not only 200cc, but all sorts of fun new tracks yeah. that uh, we've gotten some experience with. And... Ben Moore, who is still clicking away passionately, will be clicking with me tomorrow here at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on twitch.tv slash game shows. We'll be playing Hearthstone. The last wing of Black Rock Mountain opens up tomorrow, uh, and we will be going through and uh, trying out those cards and talking about all of the wings. I don't know if I will beat uh, that wing before the time I get on that stream. Maybe I'll have time tomorrow. Uh, and uh, full playthrough Friday, Shovel Knight on PS4. Our, multiple people will be playing this, right? Oh, Not sure. just one. It's a thing where you hand it off after you die. 
We don't do many handoff full playthroughs, right? <laughs> no, we, we don't that? do it a lot. This will be our first handoff full playthrough Friday. Yeah. Playing the game from start to finish. That's awesome. Here yeah. on our Twitch channel. Uh, and of course, GT Live. You can catch a new episode next Wednesday. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. You can subscribe to us on the channel you are at right now on Twitch.tv. Uh, you can also subscribe to us on YouTube at Game Trailers and at GT Reviews. And you can also visit GameTrailers.com, which is all our, where all our stuff is at. You can follow this guy, Kiff, at KiffVH. You can follow Dave Fenoy at Dave Fenoy on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much. Thank this you. is, I mean, I'm literally, I'm seeing a lot of comments come up in chat. We're just like, I got to clear something from my eyes. Like, <laughs> you, it's very inspirational uh, um, uh, speeches and comments on, on these questions, guys. And, Stay inspired oh. and don't get cynical. It's not impossible. It's People not do impossible, it. It's not impossible, you know. That people are getting into this business and having successful careers every day, and there's right. there's actually more work, and and in games it's it's growing and yeah. growing and growing. So what are you guys working on? You mentioned Richie Rich. You're yes, doing right Richie now. Rich on Netflix comes out May 22nd. We have our second season launches. Uh, you are I'm, Daddy Rich. I am Cliff Rich. I play a complete <laughs> idiot. It's super fun. My character is uh, he is uh, has the enthusiasm of a cheerleader, but the intelligence of a quesadilla. Um, and uh, I'm in the film Danny Collins uh, with Al Pacino. Small bit, but uh, I I'm there. And uh, what else? Sorry, keep hitting the table. Bam! Um, and I dominate a track and field. And uh, <laughs> other stuff that's, that's coming. But I'm on uh, Twitter at, at KiffVH and uh, Instagram at, at KiffVH. And uh, check out the website at KiffVH.com. What do you, you got stuff coming up? I know uh, it's hard to tell sometimes. You're like, what, well, there's what some, can I some, talk about? Some things you can't talk about. Yeah. But right. uh, I, as a matter of fact, there's a lot of them. But uh, Borderlands, um, playing Finch, who's uh, uh, kind of a not so nice guy. Uh, <laughs> not many nice people in Borderlands, not, to be honest. I, I get to play a lot of bad guys. The Guardians of the Galaxy, the cartoon. I'm playing Korath, who's one of the bad guys. Cool. Uh, if you watch the movie, it was the Jaiman Hansu part. Oh, awesome. oh okay, cool. cool. Um, awesome, great stuff coming up. And really, again, wonderful conversation. So yeah, check out their stuff they have right now. Check out the games that they are in that we also talked about. And check out another GT Live next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Thank you guys again. Thank you, Ben, for playing Heroes of the Storm, clicking away the whole time. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bring snacks next, guys. Bye. Bring snacks. <laughs> yeah, give me the, the gauntlet's been thrown. <laughs>